Ah, <sighs> oh, Sandy. You're just amazing. Amazing, 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 amazing. The music, it has so much depth, so much pain, so much joy, so much hope, so much life. And of, it reminds me that as I sit here with you from afar, from quarantine from my bedroom that I'm standing on so many shoulders. I'm standing on the shoulders of my family. I'm standing on the shoulders of this community of Dusty, Carol, all of you. I'm standing on the shoulders of the theologians and the mystics I have read who have taught me. I'm standing on the shoulders of friends that you see me here before you, of course, you see me here on the screen, but what you don't see is all the people who are lifting me up so that I can be here with you. So thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Carol. Um, thank you, everyone. I'm grateful for technology. I'm grateful that I was supposed to be there at Sophie's Bar and Grill with you in person. Um, on screen for all of you at home, but at Sophie's in person, and it's not meant to be. Um, this week, Carol, you mentioned that we are spirit living in a material world, and my material world this week has been um, intense, very intense. Uh, this last week, my wife uh, got COVID, and she had to move through all that so we were trying to quarantine her trying to keep her in the corner of the house and we kept testing negative my children and i so we thought hey you know maybe we can get through this and i was on the phone with dusty all week saying you know i'm, I'm testing negative I, I feel a little bit scratchy but it's probably allergies it's probably fine i'll see you on sunday and then mid this week, uh, Wednesday or Thursday, uh, I tested positive, and all of a sudden, <laughs> I got smacked with something. So my material world, my circumstances have been up and down and overwhelming. We are quarantining. My girls are home for a couple weeks. Uh, so there's so much going on in this material world. But as usual, what's going on in my life is exactly what i need to talk to you about so that's i'm very thankful for that i'm very thankful for the serendipitousness for the serendipity that brings my life wisdom and brings wisdom to my life so during this past week this past couple weeks there have been times moments when I've just felt so very overwhelmed with everything around me, with everything within me, there just seems to be so much going on on this material plane, so many emotions, uh, so many thoughts, so much around me in my home, beyond my home and the world we live in. And I have a feeling that I'm not alone. I have a feeling that there are times in your life where you feel overwhelmed, where you feel like it's just too much. All of this that's going on within me, all this is going on around me. It's just so much. So part of this spiritual path, part of spirituality is learning how to balance, how to inform the material world with the spiritual world and how to communicate to the spiritual world from the material. So that's where I'd like to begin today. I'd like to begin in this state of being overwhelmed, in this state of feeling that so much around you is just pouring in on you and you don't know what to do about it. And if you've never felt that way, just use your imagination. But I have a feeling you all have. So let's start there. Let's start in this place of feeling overwhelmed in this place of feeling that there's so much going on around you and so much going on within you. I'm going to suggest we do two things to gain perspective. 
Because the first thing we want to do when we feel overwhelmed is we want to stop and gain some perspective, take stock of everything that's contributing to our current circumstances. Because we're all tied together in this web of existence, in this Indra's web. We're all tied together. So everything that's happening is informing and influencing your state of being right now. And everything you're going through is influencing everyone else. So the first thing we have to do, the first thing we should do, we could do when we feel overwhelmed is stop and take stock of what's going on. And there's two things we can do in order to do that. The first thing we can do is zoom out. Zoom out and look at our circumstances. You may think that there are things beyond your household, things beyond your community, things beyond your country, things beyond this planet that have nothing to do with how you're feeling in your state of being, but that's actually false. Everything in the world is contributing to your state of being. So when you feel overwhelmed, if you zoom out, you can take stock of everything that's influencing you in this moment. So. If I take stock of where I am right now, I can say, okay, well, I'm feeling my body feels tired and achy. This house that I'm living in, we are, we are quarantined right now, so we have to be here. Uh, we are stuck together. We can't really go out. So that is what is. But as I look around me, I see that I have food, I have clothing, I have shelter. I have my family that loves and takes care of me. So there are positive and negative things as I'm zooming out from me in my environment, positive and negative things in this house that are contributing to my state of being. If I zoom out even further, I'll notice that, oh, I have been infected with this COVID, but it's actually affecting us beyond this household. There are people who are sick. There are people who are dying. I work in a hospital. I'm a chaplain in the COVID ICU at Wake Med here in Raleigh. So my experience of COVID over this last year, although that's the past, it affects me now because it's stored in my mind and it's part of this environment, this pandemic we're living in right now, this worldwide global experience of infection we're dealing with is part of our circumstances. So as I zoom out the hospitalizations and the deaths and everything that's going on in my community, in my country, in the world, is part of these circumstances. So as I zoom out, I begin to see, oh, that's a part of how I'm feeling right now. Also, I see that there was um, there was a hurricane recently, and there's what's going on in Afghanistan with the war and trying to end war and continuing war, and that affects um my state of being because it affects this global community but i also see so many people helping i i feel the compassion of nurses and doctors and soldiers and yes politicians if you can believe it i feel the compassion of human beings showing up on a sunday from new jersey eva from new jersey just to contribute to a service. I feel that compassion. So that's part of this web of being. See, I, see what I'm doing here? I'm zooming out and I'm noticing how much is contributing to my state of being. And as I zoom out, I begin to create distance. I begin to gain perspective because I'm creating space between the one witnessing all of this, the one feeling this pain, the one feeling this sickness, the one in this house, the one in this country, the one in this world, I begin to, I begin to gain, that's hard to say, I begin to gain distance and perspective and I start to notice that I'm a part of all of this. I can keep zooming out. I can become the one witnessing the pale blue dot, as Carl Sagan used to say as he zooms out from the earth, he notices the earth becomes a pale blue dot. I can see the web of connection. I can see that we're all created. So what zooming out does for me personally, when I'm feeling overwhelmed, it helps me to see all that is contributing to this moment and helps me to gain some perspective to see how much 
is at play in this miraculous moment. So much going on around me and I can sit, I can stop and I can look at it all and say, wow, I'm a part of this creation. I'm a part of all of this that's contributing to this moment. And I can begin to look and take stock. So that is zooming out. What I also can do, because I notice and I know in my heart that part of my state of being right now, and remember, I'm in that place where I'm overwhelmed. I'm in that place where, you know, I, I, there's so much going on here, but I, I want to sort through it. I want to try to find some peace and balance. I want to try to open that door to the deeper spiritual parts of me that Carol mentioned. I know that it's not just what's around me that's contributing to this moment. It's what's within me. There's an entire world within this body, within this mind, that's also part of this particular moment, of this circumstance. So after I zoom out and take note of everything, just a little sidebar, when I say take note, I'm not a journaler or a writer. I tend to look at things conceptually. That's just how I work. But for you, it may work for you to actually write these things down. As you're zooming out, take note, draw a little picture of you in the middle with you know, a little mustache and, and some fun hair, you know, and a little dress on if you want to wear a dress or you know, a pantsuit. Pantsuits are back in right now. Mom jeans are so in right now. But draw a picture of you and actually take note of all the things that are around you as you zoom out. It might help for you to actually write these down to see what exactly is contributing to this circumstance. So I'm just going to say that you might want to write these things down. So I've zoomed out and I've noticed, okay, there's a lot contributing to what I'm feeling right now. There's a lot contributing to this circumstance. Then I zoom in and I say, or I ask, what's going on within me? What are all the elements? What are all the aspects of this particular moment that are moving inside of me? I can sit here, I can say, okay, well, I'm feeling kind of run down. <laughs> I'm feeling kind of achy and tired. That's like on the surface, that's body. If I go down deep into my body, I can feel kind of the ache. I can feel the kind of the, the soreness. I also have a bit of anxiety. You know, I've been experiencing a lot of COVID. We've all been experiencing COVID for the last year and a half. I mean, it's our reality. So there's a certain anxiety about being infected with this. There's a certain anxiety about having this. There's a certain fear of, okay, when will I begin to feel better? When will my children be able to go back to school? So there's those elements. But on the other side of that, there's also hope. There's gratitude. There's gratitude uh, that I get to be here with you. There's gratitude for technology. Oh, I'm so grateful that I can be sick and not spread it to you. I'm so grateful for this computer and this screen. There's hope for tomorrow. There's hope that I'll feel better. There's hope that I'll get back to work and that I'll be able to serve others, that I'll be able to use this experience to contribute to my storehouse of wisdom that I may help others with. So see, as I zoom in, I notice so many elements. There are memories of what I've been through this past year. There are thoughts. There's my family stored in here. There's love that supports me. There's all of you. I can feel your love. It exists within me. The deeper I go, the more I notice the vast nuances of my circumstances. So you can start to see what I'm doing here. As I zoom out, I gain perspective. As I zoom out, I look around and go, wow, there's so much contributing to the particularities of this moment. And as I zoom in, I get the same thing. I get that distance, that perspective, that hold on, there's something in me, around me, through me, that is also witnessing all of this. There's the I that is experiencing this fear, this anxiety, this hope this gratitude, these beliefs. There's this I that is experiencing you. There's something within here. So I'm gaining perspective. I'm gaining distance. And I start to witness this entire universe of experience that is this moment. Every single moment 
is an entire hierarchy of forms interacting. And I don't want to get too deep into that because that's an entire other conversation that I like to have, but I don't want you know to confuse you with all that. But just know that every single moment, there are countless innumerable, Grandma, there are countless forms interacting, contributing to how you're feeling. So when you feel overwhelmed, it's for a reason because there's so much going on. But if I zoom out and look at it all, it creates distance. I gain perspective. If I zoom in and look at it all, it creates distance. I gain perspective. And if I've been writing it down, if I'm one of the people who write it down, which maybe I am, I notice that, wow, this is all that's going on in this moment. And I can take stock of that and I can look at it. See, if I have it on a piece of paper, it's actually cool because I'm actually, I'm ritualizing the distance as me witnessing everything that's going on in my life. So that's kind of cool. So taking stock in itself is amazing. Taking stock in itself of everything you're going through is just such a beautiful practice. But the question is, once I take stock, once I look at my surroundings and all that's going on in the world, all that I can see, knowing that I've only seen, I've only witnessed a small part of it. Once I take stock of what's going on within me, of all the stuff churning inside of me, once I take stock, what do I do with it? What do I do? What's the next step? You know, how do I act? How do I not act? How do I accept water? Well, I thought today we could gain a little wisdom from the serenity prayer. The serenity prayer is something most of us know. It's, it's part of our culture. It's something that's said over and over and over again. And because it's said so much, because we hear it so much, we often don't pay much attention to it. You know, it just becomes one of those mantras, and that's fine. You know, mantras work on a level whether we understand it or not, and that's the groovy thing about mantras. But sometimes it's good to stop and think about these things we say all the time and say, well, is there any wisdom in there? Can I, re can I look at it from a different perspective? Can I look at it uh, from a different lens and see if it has anything to teach me? So what I thought we would do today is now that we've taken stock, now that we've zoomed out, and zoomed in and taking a look at our circumstances, maybe this prayer written by Reinhold Niebuhr uh, in the 30s, maybe it'll teach us something. So I'm going to whip out the prayer uh, and I'm gonna read it to you slowly. And this is the original. Uh, usually the way we hear it, it goes um, serenity, courage, wisdom. But the way that Reinhold Niebuhr originally wrote it, courage came first. I, I don't know. I just I, I, I'm affected by the way he wrote it. I like the way he wrote it. So that's what we're going to we're going to use that version. So he starts off by saying father. Now, father is his personification of God, uh, which is OK. It's OK to use father, mother, anything, as long as you realize that you are personifying something that is beyond labels. So it's OK to say father if it works for you. But that's that's where he was at that moment. That's where Reinhold Niebuhr, that's the personification that worked for him. So um, Reinhold Niebuhr writes, Father, give us courage to change what must be altered. Serenity to accept what cannot be helped and the insight to know the one from the other. Father, give us I love that he says, give us. He's praying for us. Give us as a community. Give us courage, serenity, and insight. So he's asking, he's praying for three things. He's praying for courage. He's praying for serenity. And he's praying for insight. Let's begin with courage. Father, give us courage to change what must be altered. He's asking for courage to change what must be altered. So I've taken stock. I've zoomed out. I've noticed everything that's going on in my, in my, in my circumstances this moment. I've zoomed in. I've taken stock of everything going on in this moment. And the first thing I'm going to ask for is the courage to change what must be altered. There's some things within my circumstance that must be altered. Not 
that could be altered. There's something in here that must be altered, that must be changed. And he's asking for courage. Why do you think he's praying for courage? Because to change something is hard. It's hard to change what must be altered. Everything that exists has energy to it. Everything that exists has movement to it. So to change something, it takes courage. It takes courage to stand up and say, no, this must be altered. This must be changed. So if I look around me and I say, okay, I need to rest today. There's this sickness, there's this quarantine. I need to clean, I need to straighten, I need to rest. I need to contribute to the good around me. There's something here that must be changed. You know what? In my circumstances right now, I must rest. So I must change this drive to act that I have. And so to change that, it takes a amount of courage. If I look within me and I say, okay, there's this fear and anxiety. Well, that fear and anxiety is not contributing to this moment. It's something that I feel must be changed. It must be altered. So it's going to take courage to look around me and go, okay, today I must rest. It's hard for me to rest, by the way. That's why I'm using this example. Today I must rest. Today I must change my general state of being. Today I must alter this fear and I must have the courage to do so. Now, how do I do that? How do I change something? It reminds me of the Native American analogy with the two wolves. You know, within us at all times, there are these two wolves. One is good and one is evil, and they're constantly vying for control. And which one wins? It's the one you feed. So the interesting thing about changing anything is you can't change something by pushing against it. I know that sounds paradoxical. I know that sounds like it doesn't make sense, but you can't change something outside of you or within you by pushing against it. If you look out in the world, you notice that many of us try to do that. Many of us try to harness this courage to change what must be altered by pushing against it. No. If you want to change something, you must withdraw your energy from it and give energy to something that naturally balances it. So if I want to rest today, and I'm using that as an example as I'm looking around me, because right now in this state of being, that's all I can really think about. If I say, okay, I need to rest today. I need to create a restful environment. Then I must pull back my energy from this, this motion, this desire to do and to achieve. I need to give energy to rest, to balance that. If I want to alter this fear within me, this anxiety, if I feel like this must be altered, I must have courage to alter this, then I need to pull my energy from fear and despair and give energy to hope and to gratitude. And if I do that, it'll begin to shift my circumstance. It'll begin to change what must be altered. So the first thing Ronald Niebuhr is asking for, he's asking for the courage to change what must be altered. So when we zoom out and zoom in and look at our circumstances, you're going to notice some things that must be changed. And the only way you can change them is by pulling, drawing upon that courage to give energy to something that balances it, not opposes it, not opposes it, that balances it. I've noticed that this is going on in the world today and it's bringing, bringing up this feeling. And just to let you know, zooming out and zooming in, they're all connected. So you're going to notice that a lot, that what happens out here affects what's going on in here. What's going on in here affects what's going on out there. So I need to pull my energy from this and give my energy to that to balance it. So I'm asking for courage to do that. The second thing that Reinhold Niebuhr is asking for is serenity to accept what cannot be helped. He's asking for the serenity to accept what cannot be helped. So as I zoom out and look at my circumstances, as I zoom in and look at my circumstances, as I'm taking stock of everything that's contributing to this moment, I will notice that there's so much that cannot be helped. There's so much 
that I cannot alter, that I cannot change. And I'm asking for the peace to be able to accept that. I'm asking for the serenity to be able to fall into that place that says this is okay. And what I love about the evolution of this prayer is that I believe courage and serenity are two sides of the same state of being. Courage is a state of being that allows one to give and pull energy, that allows one to say, yes, I'm going to shift and alter this. But how can one have that courage if one doesn't first have the serenity to accept what cannot be altered? And how can one have serenity to accept what cannot be altered unless one has the courage to change what can? So courage and serenity are two sides of the same state of being as I draw upon the courage to give energy to what I feel will balance my life. I'm also drawing upon the serenity to accept all that I cannot change. So Ryle Niebuhr is praying for this state of being that says, yes, this must be changed. This must be altered. So I'm going to give energy here to balance it. But I'm also going to ask for the peace to accept all of this, to accept it as it is. For only by accepting what is can I change what can be changed. And by only by changing what can be changed can I accept what is. I really hope that made sense. So Ronald, Ronald Niebuhr is asking for courage. And he's asking for serenity. He's asking for peace, which really are the same state of being. Now, the last thing he asked for is, I, is what I believe is the hinge for that state of being, courage and serenity. It all hinges upon insight and wisdom. The last thing he asked for is the insight to know the one from the other. He's asking for the wisdom, the insight to be able to recognize what must be altered and what must be accepted, what must be contributed to, what must be pulled back from, what must be given to, and what must be allowed to lie. He's asking for insight and wisdom. And where do you think that insight comes from? Where do you think that courage comes from? Where do you think that serenity comes from? Well, it comes from the same place we dipped our toe in when we zoomed out and we zoomed in. As we zoom out and take stock of our lives, we notice that we end up in this place, the space that we're viewing it all from. As we zoom in and take stock of our lives, we notice that we find ourselves in this space that we view it all from. That is where insight, courage, and serenity comes from. It comes from that space. It comes from that space of witnessing, that witnessing that looks on the world and says, yes, this, this, this. So as you're zooming out and zooming in, you're naturally falling into this space. So when it's time to drum up some courage, you are already dipping into that well that courage comes from. When it's time to ask for serenity, you're already dipping into that well where serenity comes from. And yes, when it's time to ask for insight, you are already in that space that sees all things as perfect and says, yes, today I am overwhelmed. Because how could I not be overwhelmed? There's so much going on in life. There is sickness, disease, death. There is joy. There is love. There's compassion. There's hurricanes, there's war, there's peace, there's movement, there's music, there's beauty, there's so much. But I want to sit in a place where I can view it all and choose from a prayerful stance what I want to give my energy to, what I want to pull my energy from, what peace I can find, and how I can decide what to do in this next moment. I have been practicing this all week long, and honestly, it's, it's helped. It's helped in every moment. In every moment, I'm lying going, wow, 
how could things have ended up this way? I zoom out and look and go, oh, well, that's how they ended up this way. And I zoom in and go, oh, that's how you're feeling. feeling. That's what's contributing to this being. And then I pray for courage. I pray for peace. And I pray for insight. And it doesn't make the pain go away. It makes the pain possible. It makes the pain bearable. It doesn't make the pleasure go away. It makes the pleasure possible. It makes the pleasure bearable. Because I'm viewing it all from a stance of peace and gratitude. And then it ushers in the next moment. Because all things will change. All this that is overwhelming you in this moment is also shifting and moving into the next moment. And it's our job, it's our divine right, nay, our duty to witness it. And it's all pretty amazing when we stop, we gain a little perspective, and we dip into that well that is nothing but courage, serenity, and insight. So thank you, Reinald Niebuhr. I hope I'm saying his name right. Thank you, Reinald Niebuhr. Thank you everyone for listening thank you for inviting me into your homes through the screen and i'd ask you now if you don't mind to pray with me i'm going to start this prayer by reading father give us courage to change what must be altered serenity to accept what cannot be helped and the insight to know the one from the other Father, Mother, Child, Being, Tao, Source, Elohim, Jehovah, Allah. Thank you for life itself, for pouring yourself into being and becoming all this that overwhelms us. Thank you for help. Thank you for sickness that balances health. Thank you for pleasure. Thank you for pain that balances pleasure. Thank you for the courage to witness it all, the serenity to bear it all, and the insight to know that it is all good in its own way. Thank you for space, for spaces together, for creating space, for being able to reach across technology and saying, yes, you are with me today and I am with you and we are together. Thank you for the shared space of humanity, for creation, for this pale blue dot that we exist on for this moment, for the moment before this, the moment after this, and this moment here and now. There's so much surrounding us. And when we gain a little perspective, we're able to see that it all works. So for all of this, we are grateful we say, and so it is, and ah, uh, man. Thank you for listening. I really appreciate it.